The speaker Jeroen Jongelijn uh, can be seen as uh, yeah, one of the persons um, uh, in the first wave of what later can be called street art movement. Um, uh, he did interventions in, in public space, uh, space with uh, uh, stickers and uh, spray cans. So uh, perhaps more the, the traditional graffiti technologies, but then tonight he will talk about uh, the way those projects related to the internet and how the internet transformed the projects, uh, perhaps the documentation on the internet uh, built the project and how uh, people got to know the project and started uh, um, uh, participating in his uh, interactions and in interventions in public space. Um, so, uh, Jeroen Jongelijn, welcome and a warm applause. Thank you. Um, I have uh, three projects I, uh, I would like to share with you. Uh, it's stuff I did for the last five years. So it's one project for uh, that I did like about five years ago. Volgens mij kun je het gewoon aanzetten. Dan gaat het gewoon. Gaat allemaal vanzelf. Dan praat ik gewoon lekker door. Um, uh, drie projecten. Um, dit is het uh, laatste project, dus dat gaan we niet doen. Even kijken. Kun je nog even terugkomen? <laughs> Apple, hè? Geen idee. Oh, hier, wacht even. Uh, laten we deze beginnen. Ik heb een. Um... Ja, 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 maar niet om hem te roepen om de knop in te drukken. Right. Sorry. Um, well, as, as uh, the introduction said a little bit already, uh, I do a lot of stuff in, in public space, like uh, kind of that looks like graffiti, but it's not. Um, I did art school and I came out of art school um, and decided to go into public space, to leave my traces there, to leave my art there and, and to use my studio there as well. And, um, and to not so much focus on the classical white cube as most of my uh, fellow students were, were trained to do. And um, I put a lot of stickers in the streets, a lot of wall paintings and text and that kind of stuff. And uh, along the way, uh, by doing every project, I documented it and, and it resulted in new questions that uh, were the grounds for new projects again. And along the way, um, like about six, seven years ago, eight years ago, I, I moved to Paris and I, had, I collected a lot of friends that were in a similar kind of transition, uh, having a graffiti background and already for about 10 years or 20 years doing that kind of stuff and deciding to change uh, or to, by coincidence roll into um, new media, let's say. Um, leaving the spray can behind and uh, going for posters and stickers and, and different media um, or keeping with paint but deciding to not do text pieces anymore but more going into logos and that kind of stuff. And uh, by the time I came in Paris, this whole scene in Paris had trouble with the police. Uh, everybody got arrested and threatened, etc. And I came up with a kind of an alternative plan. Why not go anonymous? Like instead of writing your name everywhere all the time, why not um, just do a kind of a anonymous logo and spread it all around? And if we are with many people, you know, we we create a kind of a um, a cover for each other. And so the pictures that that you see here, it's the art of urban warfare. It's called. Um, I don't know why it stops now suddenly, but uh, it's. Um, what I did here was. Um, um, I wrote a text and this text was presented as a, as a game manual and in this game manual I um, proposed to the participants to collect uh, military images from the news or from uh, historical material and uh, <laughs> Oh, maybe it's the last or something. Can he loop or not? Or do you have to go to the next project? It started already. No, there are still some. Yeah, good, anyway. Um, ik praat nu vanaf nu heel snel. Um, uh, in dit project nodigde ik mensen uit om uh, soldatenfiguurtjes te verzamelen. 
En daar schablonen van te maken in een van de drie spelkleuren, uh, groen, blauw of bruin. En daarmee uh, de straat als een soort van spelbord te gaan gebruiken. Um, die tekst die is gepubliceerd op verschillende formats. Ah, sorry. I'm completing the flow, sorry. Excuse me. So, uh, slower and in, in, in English. Excuse me. So, um, I, I wrote a, a game manual uh, that was the basis of this project. And I invited people to um, uh, collect military images and cut them out as stencils and to spray them in the streets in green, blue or brown. These were the kind of the limitations and to hide them, but hide them in such a manner that other people could see them as well. And by doing so, they would probably respond to it by doing the same, but in another color. And 90% of the, of the whole project was just to write this text and to, to publish it in another uh, format. So there were a couple of friends of mine that had some uh, magazines that decided to publish it. And another friend of mine uh, made a small website where he published the, the game rules. And from then on, and there was a, an email address. And from then on, I, I just got weekly, like hundreds of emails from people from, from, from Johannesburg to Toronto, whatever, the craziest place on the planet uh, from where I was at the time, uh, with images of the material. So what you see here, some is uh, my own material, some is from people that uh, send me in uh, the stuff. And, and then I uh, put it on, on the internet and I made some flyers and every time when I was invited to do a, uh, an art show I would uh, use this invitation again to uh, kind of install kind of like a propaganda center for this project and um, yeah, w w I was really uh, fascinated by the, uh, by the way how I just threw in kind of like a project and so many people really jumped in and until now, this is a project that I quit like about six, seven years ago, six years ago, when I got in, into legal problems with this. And, uh, but now, if you go to Berlin, still it, it continues and still in some other cities, you see some new uh, stencils popping up that have the same military figures with the oval foot, this kind of pl like plastic figure kind of uh, uh, stuff. And maybe it's not even based anymore of the project initially, but it's just kind of estafette that co keeps continuing. Um, let's go to the next project. Um, so about the, the technical implications of this whole thing or, or how it's done, it's like, it's the, the publication itself um, that was the, the, the middle stuff. Yeah, the middle one. <laughs> Before I slip into this old path again. I can just loop it again. Okay, I'm going to play. All right. So um, this is another project that um, that had a, a completely different approach. Um, I put, uh, I made a very small. Uh, st this was a time that um, when I started doing this kind of street art intervention kind of things. It was like 95, 96 more or less. And it took like 10 years before everybody knew about Banksy and, and Shepard Ferry and all this stuff. So also when I started it, the streets were completely empty. There was just some classical graffiti tagging, but for the rest, no stickers, no stencils anymore from the, from the 80s, whatever. So, um, but 10 years later, it was every, electric box was completely covered with stickers and um, it became a, a, a very explosive culture. And even the city council started to uh, discover this as a medium, as a kind of a counter medium to the commercial things that they wanted to exploit. And so they decided to um, pay some, some people from the city council to actually remove all the stickers. So. Um, this took a while before most of the cities that I uh, used to put my stuff in became pretty uh, clean from uh, stickers. And this is a kind of a temporary project that I uh, uh, decided to, uh, to do, to develop, to play with. Um, 
it was also a time that I started to travel a lot from, from city A to city B, etc. Um, mostly because I was invited to, do, uh, to participate in, in shows and exhibitions. And uh, like in, in art exhibitions, in galleries and stuff. And um, um, at the same time, like one of the first places, for example, was Christchurch, New Zealand, which is now a very uh, famous uh, place, a tragically famous place, I have to say that. But um, so what I did there was um, I put, uh, I made a, a small uh, kind of an animation series of hand walking. And um, every little, uh, every movement I cut up as a, as a single frame for an animation and I put them in the streets. Um, and every time uh, photographing them, how do you click that thing? Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It's a magic trick. Uh, so maybe just uh, let's flip on a DVD. Uh, the days of my paper. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So, but um, what for me, like going to Christchurch, for example, or to the, this is a small uh, video uh, that came out of this kind of project. Uh, every city where I went to put stickers in the streets, I documented the photographs and the aim was to make a, an, an animation out of it, like a film, a DVD, and uh, projecting it then in the art space that was my, my host, that, that was the one that invited me. And the longer the project went, uh, the bigger the, the, um, the collection became. Like uh, the last uh, one, for example, was, uh, let's say, in Eindhoven. And by that time I had nine animations, so you had, so this is one of the first, is this all individual stickers that you, that you see. There are about like uh, 1,200 stickers that were put in one week um, and photographed uh, individually. So, and I started to make uh, animations that um, uh, were counted by other animations. So you had this one from the city in, in Switzerland, together with uh, an animation from New York, or from Suriname in South America, or uh, Antwerp, or... Kijk, hoe kan deze er weer uit? En dan gooien we even... This one. So and for me it was interesting to... Um, for me it wasn't a, a great excuse to go to a, this exotic place for me and to just drift in the city because I, I don't want to uh, be for, for one week just in a white cube uh, making a mural or something. Um, just to drift through every city, uh, through every street because to put up like 1500 stickers uh, to come up with an animation of like about four minutes or something um, was um, I had to go to check every lamppost, every potential podium for, for my sticker and to photograph it in such a manner that it also could result in an interesting frame in the animation finally that would be projected or, or screened on a monitor and uh, to give a kind of an um, uh, um, a kind of an imprint of the city itself kind of like a like a like a, a blueprint of what is essential in in this case new york compared to uh, st gallen switzerland in the animation before or a couple of other ones that I, that I took here. And like New York, if you, you have to stare at the animation to look through the animation and then suddenly you can concentrate a bit more on the, on the frames. It's like quarter of a second, so it's, you know, it's, it's too fast to really look at it. But finally the idea was that uh, you get kind of like uh, overwhelmed by so many micro impulses of what the city is. And um, which are completely different than Rotterdam or Utrecht or Paris or Antwerp or any other, whatever, Shanghai, you name it. Um, anyway, so for me as well, what, what was interesting about um, the kind of the, the um, that it was a, a two part project where it was a very kind of a classical, like a land art kind of project, let's say, like where you, me as, a, as an artist, I commit myself to walk through the cities, to drift around, to discover the city, and to leave my traces. 
Um, and at the same time, I document them with the aim to make a film. And uh, this film then uh, gives you a complete different angle of the, of, the, of the project that I did, or the, of the, the, the sticker project that I present. And the interesting thing was like, and, and the aim that I had was like, once people see the film, they go outside and they start discovering the stickers because they are stuck on stuff that is completely marginal. Um, as the, 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 the pictures that we saw before in the lecture before, uh, like advertising really plays on straight face in, in, on a certain level. And the stickers that I put up were uh, kind of um, an exploration of uh, completely kind of marginal spaces. And to promote these marginal spaces as well as a, as a potential podium for my kind of stuff, let's say, like free speech or art or whatever, any, any other kind of non-commercial kind of uh, things. And as well, like to promote it through this kind of films and, and, and presentation to um, that marginal is not like it's a pity that it's marginal, da -da -da, but that it was a really like, a, like a, a much more interesting podium than having my sticker blown up like five by 20 meters uh, on the side of a building in one of the main boulevards of Rotterdam, for example. I prefer this because it's much more efficient in my, in my way. Um, as I said, I put really a lot of these uh, things up and um, maybe we can put the, as well, the last one for, uh, as an idea. Like uh, all the, the individual uh, stickers on themselves don't mean so much in this project. But, um, and you need to see the film before you understand that it's just one frame in, in, a, larger, uh, in a larger story. And, uh, and only after, I, in the end I did like nine, uh, nine films uh, that became one project. And uh, like nine chapters somehow of, of one uh, story. And... Um, Somehow, what is, what is different compared to the other projects that I did in this case is like the, the, um, the representation like through the, the animations and how it's put together um, really adds every time an extra layer to it. The fact like if you see one animation, it says a lot about like how one individual sticker works in one street compared to the next sticker that you can find on an electric box in another street. But... Um, at the same time, when you see this animation compared to the other ones, um, suddenly the, f the films itself become, um, again, like an extra way to compare the cities and, and the way to compare it is through all this media layer somehow. So this is Suriname, uh, South America, a little bit different than New York <coughs> or Switzerland. It was really hard to find any stickable surface. The only stickable surface I could find that is really working very good were uh, trash bins that were donated by the Dutch. So <laughs> it was exactly the same trash bins I already put my stuff up before. And did you sticker it during the night or during the uh, day? No, night? during the day. It's during the night you only get in trouble nowadays with all the cameras <laughs> and all that. And if you do this during the day, people think you work for the city council or something like that. Or they think it's, oh, it must be from Red Bull or something. So it's okay. <laughs> So, but it's, it's interesting, you know, like when I started to do this kind of stuff like 15 years ago, um, it was like, uh, it was the early days of that people started to criminalize everything and say, oh, it's vandalism what you do. And where like 10 years before that, it was completely accepted as, oh, you must be an artist or something because it's not commercial. <laughs> and um, so, and what happens now with the cameras everywhere and they start to fix now computers behind the cameras doing facial recognition and all that. Um, sometimes I even put a fake nose on <laughs> when I do stuff in the street. But uh, yeah, you know, as I said with the project before, I got really in trouble because um, I, I had a show in a museum and I got caught doing the promotion of a stencil in the street like the, the graffiti, let's say, the graffiti part. I got arrested and because of that, I got kicked out of the museum. And the result was that uh, after that, uh, somehow they took away the, the context of art 
and then the only remains how people looked at it was uh, that it was graffiti or, or vandalism and so it got kind of crippled and there was it was in Germany and um, then they started to do research about the project and they discovered that it was really a, a, a popular project by the time that it was happening in Hamburg and in Oldenburg and in Berlin and whatever like 20 cities in Germany alone but also in, in France and in Holland and, and all around and uh, so they thought like wow you know it's a, it's, it's, and it's a collective it's a, these guys were with more people so it's a criminal organization <laughs> and so, so they started to experiment with these new laws that they made these new rules um, uh, it was after 9-11 you know like it was 2003 or 4 or something so they were really like enthusiastic to experiment on me and uh, so I got plucked from the streets by silent cops and hijacked and all that. It was really, hey, I'm an artist, you know. It's, I'm just kidding. So anyway, so um, this was uh, the second project. I would like to show you one more. Oh, screw it up again. Okay. And then the plastic bags. Oh, yeah. So the, the third project I, I'd like to, sh to show you um, is called uh, Plastic Bags as a Jolly Roger. It's again a completely different kind of uh, approach. There's a, again like a couple of years after, there's a lot of projects in between. But this is like um, uh, a couple of photographs that I, I like to show you. I um, started to collect this kind of uh, trash, uh, like uh, shopping bags that were just like a litter in the streets drifting around and I thought it was pretty amazing because they're relatively expensive you have to pay like 25 30 cents 40 50 cents for these bags and they were everywhere and I started to collect them and um, I was looking for a kind of a better place for them and uh, because also in the time like you know all the stickers I put and all the the, the graffiti kind of stuff and the paint stuff uh, the city started to remove everything pretty fast so the lifespan of the actual physical the analog work let's say uh, became shorter and shorter so I was looking for alternative ways to sort of expand the analog life and um, so climbing buildings uh, makes it pretty uh, pretty good uh, protected I don't see a city council guy with his fluorescent jacket climbing up the church to remove my bag it's hard to see but it's this one there. Oh, it's here. It's the tower of the Boymans Museum, so I had to get in there and dismantle the security things. And all that. <laughs> this is uh, another bridge. It's like the the ones you you see here. They're all done in Rotterdam because they were all around like a, a, a tall uh, high-rise building where on the top floor I had a, a show, and it was a gigantic view over a panoramic view over the city, and but it, it was like 125 or 30 meters high. And uh, so these were kind of like anti-references somehow. They, they were, uh, how to say this, um, the apartment was so high that you lost kind of the reference to the, the real street level that I'm normally working with. And so I, I filmed these from the street and showed them in the, um, in the apartment, in the exhibition space. And uh, so, but I put up like about 25, 30. And, uh, and then sooner or later the wind will rip them off and put them back in circulation again. Um, so I'm just like, you know, there's one chapter in his life, in the life of the bag, that um, is uh, kind of glorious. <laughs> so plastic bags is Jolly Roger. Um, the Jolly Roger is, a, is the old, old name of pirate flag before it was just the skull and bones. Uh, it's like every pirate had its own little mark to show that he was a real rebel or whatnot, and um, I thought like the, the you know like in the beginning as well um, the landscape that um, <laughs> that I I think it's the last picture of this oh okay but um, the landscape that I that I work in the analog you know the city itself um, it's very much dominated by the rules that are there somehow to protect. The commercial aspect of the city and um, using these plastic bags from the, from the supermarkets that are very visible as well and all the traces they, they leave behind 
and in the, in the whole commercial, the, the, the consumerist kind of aspect, there was also part of the fun of it to, to, to put this back. And kind of to bring it back to the theme of, of uh, tonight, like the kind of the, the, the kind of the, 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 the from the analog to the, the digital flip, is like the photographs itself and the films that I made, um, they, they are uh, kind of spread out, like I, you know, they're on the internet and, and people publish them in magazines and catalogs and whatnot. And uh, like the films are shown in, in, in art circuits. And through that, um, it sort of supports the myth of the idea that the plastic bag that you can see, that it's potentially not just litter that someone left, but it's done by an artist. You know, that next time you see a tr plastic bag somewhere, it could have been me or someone that did it like that. And it's, it's about kind of like the, it's, it's to address the moral aspect of what it is to be an artist in a city. And that it's really different than being a graphic designer, for example, or a city planner that has completely different kind of uh, uh, responsibilities. So um, it's hanging, so I guess it's the last picture. Um, I can talk for another hour, but I don't know. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Thanks for the presentation. <laughs> so, uh, any uh, important questions to Jeroen? Okay, let. Did you get out of trouble? Like you got into uh, in, in trouble for the first project? Yeah, of course. I mean, we, of course, we, we're not living in, uh, in in Libya or something like that. So, you know, the worst thing you can happen is that they keep you on a sandwich with hagelslag for one night in the prison, <laughs> and uh, and you have to pay a fine for whatever. You know, in worst case, it's a thousand euros, and even that is overcomable. You know, like in the arts, you sell one painting and you 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 made it up again. So. You know, it's trouble is very relative. So it's it, for me, it's like it's it's not scaring me anymore. It's part of my practice, and uh, so it's part of the fun. Spending even. Mats, uh, on Hagelslag not is no, part of no, 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 no. But the risk that yeah. you might get in trouble for picking up this plastic bag and then replacing it in another location. You know, in the end, nothing happens. Um, if they don't see me doing it, they just think that it's the wind that did it. But if they see me, if they catch me in the act. It might cost me like about eight, 80 euros to 120 euros the plastic bag. So. That's all right. <laughs> that's the price I sell them as well for. <laughs> yeah, that's one question I had. The, 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 the change of using stickers instead of stencils, uh, was, was one first and then the other? Or was it a, a marking point? Uh, and and no. uh, does it have to do with the, the legal issues? I mean, I can imagine that no. having spray paint on a wall is, uh, is, is a is a higher fine than just one sticker? No, no not really. It's um, the reason to change material has to do with the fact that um, for me it's important that people don't see this as the promotion of, of, my, of me, of my own brand, my own name or something like that, but that it's the project itself that has to stand for itself. And so 99% of the stuff I do is completely anonymous. And only after, through the documentation that gets in another flow, then I put my own name on it to show that it's my stuff, just to pay the rent. Um, but um, if it's like a stencil or a sticker, it's just, you know, every medium has its own opportunities and possibilities. And, but legal or illegal, I think that's not very uh, challenging to think about for me. Uh, they misunderstood the government misunderstood your art. You even got punished for. No, it's it's. I didn't. I didn't see it. No, it's it's it's. Uh, it's challenging, you know. Like everything you do in, in public space, uh, either analog or digital, uh, will be seen and therefore interpreted by other people. In you know, you don't have the grip on it, and you know, language is kind of like like also visual language is a kind of a set of codes that we agree on more or less. But with art, you always experiment and you look for the boundaries and the chance is very likely in my kind of field to be misinterpreted. Mm -hmm. And um, in this case, for example, my audience is not the police. They never are. But if they cross my path and, you know, yeah, we have to have a kind of a discussion then about what I'm doing. And 
if I'm lucky, they understand and they let me go. If I'm unlucky, uh, you know, I pay a fine. But, uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, do you, uh, <laughs> is, is one of your purpose to, uh, to let people participate in your art project so that you put it on the internet so yes. they respond with pictures? Yeah, yeah that's, I, I didn't say, about, uh, say anything about that. That's, that's a good question. It's, um, it's, it's a really important element of, of the things I do. In, in all my projects, there is a, a certain element of participation. But it's not always in a literal sense. Like the first project I showed, it was a very literal invitation for people to join in in the party. And in this case, it's completely different, of course. But there is an interactive aspect to it um, that I use kind of the translation of the medium into another field uh, as a tool for. And, but this participation in this case is just to look around for, for things that are... Uh, non-commercial in public space somehow and and to to find that challenging and you know like the sticker projects that um i showed here i did like whatever 50 or 100 different ones uh, besides that as well and um i was very active in promoting this whole sticker medium for other people to join in and to do this well because i i felt a little bit lonely on this electric box having just one sticker there and the aim was to have my sticker among with a hundred others by a hundred other people and so with every project there is a new challenge and with the stickers it was aimed on that and with the bag it's another kind of participation but did it help you get in touch with uh, different artist crews all over, uh, over, the, over the planet yeah of course yeah i mean but it's you know if you're active in, in any art form uh you look for your peers or your your uh, equals or your you know your audience etc and yeah then you go everywhere <coughs> sooner or later of course with with you know like the graffiti background that i have um there is a there is a very tight uh, community sense also because it's at least the hardcore part is very um um you know the stakes are very high the prosecution risk is very high so the people are in hiding and therefore they are very the community sense is very tight and um, that makes it very easy to travel everywhere. Yeah. Yes? Well, you were just saying this about the community feeling, but also you said you don't put your name on your art until afterwards. Are there ever, any, are there ever other people that take credit for your art? Or? Um, well, sometimes it's... Um, People tried it, let's say, you know, but um, the kind of stuff, you know, like what in, in, the, in the title there, it was like Jeroen Jongelein, my name, Influenza. Influenza is not a thing that sounds like, why beautiful flowers, you know, it's like dirty sickness. Um, a lot of the things that I do, I try to kind of build a clause that people cannot steal it or incorporate it in a commercial kind of things. <laughs> Um, like with the plastic bags, it's pretty high to climb on, on this church, and it's, it's dangerous. So I don't see that a guy that is like 15 years old working for Coca-Cola to put up a poster will do the same kind of thing. You know, in, in the case of the plastic bags, there's nothing to steal except for an attitude that is very hard to commercially exploit somehow. So I try to build in, in every project or in most of the projects, a kind of a way that... Uh, there's nothing to, to, to copy or something. But sometimes it happened more or less, but yeah. And how about the competition within this community that you were talking about? Well, like in every community, you know, either if you're a scientist or a writer or a graffiti writer or an, or an artist, visual artist, there's always a sense of, of uh, competition, but it's in a positive way, you know, like what I do is completely unique to what my friends are doing or my colleagues are doing. So, you know, you challenge each other and that's just, you know, helping each other in my opinion. So. That's cool. <laughs> uh, do you think there should be a limit? Are there places uh, where you think it's unjust to put stickers? Yeah, everywhere. There's no limit. <laughs> Stuff of other people you're not allowed to touch. Huh? No, but. <laughs> yeah, of course, I have, I have my own uh, moral clock inside me, like everyone has, but it's different motivated than the clock that I'm raised to follow, you know, that, like, 
it, the fact that I'm not allowed to stick, uh, put a sticker on a billboard, um, that, you know, or even worse, you know, like in the Netherlands, um, you're not allowed as a private person to put anything in public space. You have to be a legal person. But when I'm alone, I'm, I'm not uh, able to become a legal person, even to become a, f a foundation or something. You have to have a group of people, etc. And so it means that I'm cut out of my own landscape. When I go from my house to the, the, the supermarket, I cannot leave a trace. If I put my bicycle next to the lamppost, it's scratching. They can prosecute me for that. I think that's completely ridiculous. In my, and that's where, in my art, my motivation and my my engagement, political engagement comes from. Let's say, it's like I think that everybody is entitled to use public space, analog or digital, freely. And well, that's you know, that's that's the thing. Like, of course, I will not put a sticker on your back if you turn away. You know, because I don't think that's funny. But if you have a jacket with a big uh, Philips logo, it might be funny you know, to cross it. it. It really depends on the occasion, but it has everything to do with a kind of a, a moral kind of, uh, or an ethical kind of, uh, it's an ethical presentation, you know, somehow. Do you remember a particular dilemma that you encountered? Where you thought, well, maybe either. Well, with every step I make, Every trace that I, I leave behind, I'm hesitating if that's a just thing or not. And sometimes I miscalculate, of course. You know, I do a thousand things a day and I, sometimes I misstep. But f I step over it. I learn from that and I continue so that the next time it gets better. But I, you know, like as a graffiti writer, as a tagger, for example, you know, I have a marker in my pocket and I go to a party and the toilet is completely trashed. And I thought, well, let's add something on the ceiling. Nobody was there yet. I think it's different than if I come to your private house in the house of your parents and I do the same, you know, regards to my friends that will visit the toilet as well. So, you know, there's, but both is illegal, but I think the one is a little bit less illegal than the other one because the, the club or the bar that I'm in with that market, they're really happy that the toilet is trashed because it's good for their name, their notoriety, because it attacks new customers that are as poor as I am. One more question. Because um, uh, I sort of uh, slipped it there um, uh, about the exploitation of commercial parties of this uh, language, uh, so to say, of, of the street art um, uh, yeah, movement. Or, mm -hmm. Uh, you, you see lots of commercial parties, uh, you mentioned uh, Red Bull uh, posting a sticker. How do you relate to this uh, adaptation of yeah, your, your strategies by these commercial parties on the streets as well? Well, it's, it's a very dynamic uh, world we're living in, you know, like 15 years ago it was really different than 10 years ago, which was really different than 5 years ago. When I started doing this stuff after I, I went to art school and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. No, um, uh, I, w I went to art school and I was trained to become a painter and to wait in my studio until a collector would come or, so, or a curator that would offer me a podium and in this podium they would sell my paintings and that's how I would make my money. And I thought, okay, that's really ridiculous. I just go in the streets, I make my paintings black and white, I print it myself on my own uh, Windows 95 computer that I just had and th that was the tools that, that were available and I just put my stickers in the streets with my own manifesto and, and, and that worked. But by that time, nobody had internet or maybe 10 out of a million people. So there was no, um, um, let's say, like there was not so much uh, turning speed of the images that I made and the amount of people that, that see it, which is completely different nowadays. You know, like now we make a photograph with our iPhone and in two seconds it's on Facebook and everybody knows. So, and therefore also everybody can copy it. But also therefore, I make other work. You know, the plastic bags that I do now look completely different than the stuff I did 15 years ago. And it has to do, of course, with the potential, it's not danger, but the potentiality of people uh, incorporating it in their language and that before I know it, I have to run behind their language somehow. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I try to just uh, do my own projects in my own speed with my own fun and my own motivation. 
documenting them, looking for a, a, an interesting medium to translate it to bring it to a bigger audience than just the people that are used to look at electric boxes or lampposts. And um, by the time I find it, I already roll, I'm starting to roll into a new project more or less. So the, the, um, the, the, the way of translating it to a bigger audience, you know, there, there's a kind of a, a time lapse, mm -hmm. like a, a time gap in between. That's the kind of way how I sort of protect myself for the youth. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. That was not too serious. Um, Not so much. Because you're telling like it's, you should uh, sell paintings, but you did this. Well, you know, a, a plastic bag is very hard to sell. Yeah. You know, of course. Um, I'm trying it. You know, and like I'm now on the top 50 euros for a plastic bag that I found on the street. It's still nothing to. I cannot pay the rent of it, but as an art statement, it's, it starts to become already interesting. Of course, I aim for 500 euros up. <laughs> for one plastic bag, Albert Heijn, but I don't know if it works, but you know, this, this is just three projects that I showed, but I, I do really a lot of different stuff, different media, I have a gallery that tries to sell super boring stuff for art fairs internationally, <laughs> and, you know, they call me sometimes and make me happy with an amount like, yeah, we sold the poster that you ripped off the wall, and <laughs> and you know it, but it's completely different. That it's really not cool to show that here for you guys. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious. How did you climb up the high bridge? <laughs> ah, yeah. Um, most of the time, there's just a ladder somewhere. Also in the church. Yes, yes. There's always someone that has to fix the roof, for example. So, if you, you know, it's for me the fun is also to to use public space. Um, by using it, you learn to look at it in a different way. And like a building is meant by the designer, like the architect, and, uh, and by the city planner how to place it in a, in a certain way. It's just the facade is great, and to live in is also great, but the sides and the back is really boring. And I managed to, to kind of, I, I'm kind of reprogramming myself all the time in looking through this kind of tricks, and uh, like looking through the tricks of advertising, or in this case with architecture, and there's always a back door and there's always a handle to pull yourself up and, and to have a, a fantastic view of the city finally. Because that's, for me, privately, is the aim besides putting a plastic bag up. It's also to climb on a roof that is not allowed to, to stand on and you get a, a, a city view for free, you know. So, uh, but it's, it's pretty easy somehow. It's, it's not as scary as it looks. Yeah, one more. Uh, the museum that you were kicked out of because you were uh, called by the police every other day. Yes. How is it? Um, is it true that my brain goes in Dutch, so it's uh, a little bit to translate. But um, um, you, you're reacting. Uh, your um, street art is, re is a reaction on how this. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's good. Um, Do it in Dutch. I will translate. Yeah. Okay. Matter of fact. Ik heb een beetje het gevoel dat je je dat je, je, je schiet, dat een beetje een reactie is op zeg maar, iets dat, um, dat zeg maar, op een gratis manier toch iets aan de man wil brengen. En hoe je bij, de, bij, de, bij een museum, zo, misschien dat het helemaal niet klopt, maar dat het gevoel heeft. Bij een museum um, waar je dan uitgetrapt wordt, heb je dan niet het gevoel dat daarna van ik ga de musea ga ik dus ook op zo'n manier gebruiken, zoals de straat. Um. I, I don't understand this question very well, although my Dutch is pretty good. Are you trying to use museums like you use the street right now? Ah, okay, right. Um, no, it's really, really different. Um, a museum or a gallery or, or you know, an, an, an art podium that is really kind of kind of an academic space, you know, like they, they build a block and inside this block there is a vacuum and in this vacuum there is the bubble of art, the history and, and you know, all the context of art, art. And I love that because it's a great podium to look at a sticker that you put on a lamppost in a completely different angle. You know, like, like the lecture we had in the beginning, it's like, you know, it, it tells about all kinds of aspects that 
also for me, it's like it's stuff I know, that stuff that happened in art in the 60s and in the 50s and in the 20s that for me are very relevant and very important still up to date. And it's a museum or a gallery, whatever you want to call it, um, that gives you the possibility or gives the audience the possibility to look at a plastic bag in this context. If, I, if you see my plastic bag only in the street and not here while we're talking about it, uh, it's just a plastic bag and you would not know that it's mine. So I really need this translation to make clear that it's the art, that it's about art, that it's about how we live in our society nowadays, blah, 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 blah. blah. And so being kicked out of a museum says a lot about the museum that they don't understand their own responsibility. They were really stupid. Because also the, this, this Art of Urban Warfare project that I showed before, it, it was a really good project. And the fact that I got caught in the streets, you know, I can stand my own. It's not a problem. I can pay the fine. The fact that they became afraid was that they didn't understand what was the, the potential of contemporary art, that it could really also wake up certain people. So, I don't know if that's a bit of an answer to your question. Um, I can imagine <coughs> some people find the plastic bag hanging on the church not particularly pleasing aesthetically. Uh, how are the reactions on the street? Because, yeah, there are two contexts in the museum and on the street. Well, it's simple. It, the people that, the normal passerby thinks it's the wind that did it. So. You know, it's it's their own shit, you know. It's, and, and it's you put a plastic bag under your saddle, the next day it's gone, and you don't think about it. And then three weeks later, you see one on the church. You know, in the best case, you will hear about this project and you can blame me, you know. <laughs> but the, most of the people don't know it, so they just blame someone else without knowing that it's themselves, that it's their own plastic bag somehow. So. One last question and then uh, a break. Website. Uh, yeah, uh, flu01.com. It's F L U from influenza 01. Remember that it's not fluo e or fluoi or fluo1, but 01. You can Google it. <laughs> okay, thanks very much. Thank you. So a uh, 20 minute break, around half, uh, we start again with uh, Evan Roth. <laughs>